But the real purpose of the game is to make a lot of noise and run around chasing people until nobody knows which side you are on or who won. Robert Hathaway is an English teacher at Century College. I still maintain the classroom is one of the most exciting places to be. Uh, to, to lead an, a, a group of students in an investigation of a new idea and, and when they get it, uh, when they, you know, and, and then get excited by it and want to pursue it, 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 it's incredible. General education programs provide the foundation for learning. There are many new or unique programs that are supported by the liberal arts and sciences. The Minnesota State Colleges and University System is one of the leaders in green education. A new wind energy technology program is training technicians at the Minnesota West Community and Technical College Canby campus. Renewable energy technology programs are also underway at the Granite Falls campus. Duane Caro is the instructor in the program. We're going to take this corn, which is grown all over uh, the United States, and we are going to process it and make ethanol out of it. Ethanol, when we're done with this uh, process, is 100 percent alcohol. and We're going to use that as a gasoline additive. I think we're the first in the state to have an ethanol training program. Ethanol is made just down the road from the campus in Granite Falls. Not all of the corn will be converted to ethanol. What's left is this DDG and that's the livestock feed. And it's actually better livestock feed than the corn was. A lot of cooperation with industry and we've secured some um, state and federal grants. John Justin is the campus CEO at the Minnesota West Community and Technical College in Granite Falls. According to Justin, the ethanol training program is so popular that it's getting statewide and national attention. Both the programs have two parts. They have an on-campus program and then they have the internet theory-based so students all over the country can enroll and we've had students in Alaska and New Jersey and pretty much from anywhere in the country. So she has several screens at a time she can look at. Students in many programs learn through the use of simulations. Yes, I'm quite nauseous. Well, we're going to check the placement of the tube that's in your stomach. To make These sure nursing students are using their problem-solving skills to so assess a hypothetical I condition. Gonna... All right, I can hear some gurgling. This role-playing exercise is part of North Hennepin Community College's medical simulation training for their nursing program, one of the many health services programs in the two-year colleges. Hi, Mr. Williams. My name is Tiffany. Mary Sladek is behind the controls. We go into the simulation mode where the scenario is played out. And depending on how the students respond to um, the client, um, the client may improve or they may become more ill. Yes, I'm quite nauseous. Well, we're going to check the placement of the tube that's in your stomach and make sure it's in the right spot. Cooling at the bottom of your After the scenario is played out, the students and the instructor watch a recording and critique their session. Well, thanks for being such a good patient. We're going to let you get some rest now. There's also the reflection. It's the 24 hours afterwards for the students to really let it sink in as to how did they respond to this particular client. We know that nursing has become so much more complex and we want that student to be productive and competent. Um, and simulation really offers that avenue of active learning and growth for the student. The content itself came from the subject matter experts at the Journalism and Mass Communication School at the University of Minnesota. And so they know all that part and we know how to put it into a game. Some students want their senses to be engaged through the use of games and simulations. This game is used by the Journalism School at the University of Minnesota to teach investigative reporting skills. It's designed by a team of programmers and animators who are employees of Pine Technical College. John Heckman is the director of the Johnson Center for Virtual Reality. We can build a uh, serious game that uh, incorporates core concepts into a fun way to learn. Those people find that it gives the game gives them a way to uh, incorporate all of their classroom and book learning into a real experience and sort of put all those skills together at once and practice them. The center also works with Julie Dillenberg's manufacturing engineering class at Pine Technical College. 
we actually have a partnership that uh, um, they do a lot of the VR simulation for different companies. They have a fancy scanning device, for example, and we can take those scanned parts and turn them into a, a virtual simulation. Simulations may also incorporate touch. This haptics device allows a user to feel a virtual model. Here in the real world. And I can push against it, I can move it against it. When I touch it, my uh, haptics device stops, so it feels like there's something real there. And when I drag it across it, I can feel the texture of the surface. This one feels like sandpaper. Put the gun down and get out from the car! This simulation is part of a test used by the Minneapolis Community and Technical College's law enforcement program. Through scenarios like this, students learn shoot and don't shoot judgment skills. Many colleges offer programs in law enforcement. It popped up over the top like he was trying to do on you, and then you'd have gone. The Minnesota State Colleges and Universities educate 92% of the state's new law enforcement graduates. Uh, but overall, it's a good job. Do something. Make sure we ask for backup, all right? Yes. Okay, this would be a good tree to uh, get a diameter. And, we'll and for a breath of fresh air. My job then is to get the kids out in the field to experience kind of what it's like to, to work outdoors or, you know, when we identify trees, we travel around the area quite a bit, and um, we look at the trees from, you know, different perspectives, the leaves, the twigs, and the buds, the bark. Gary Carson is a natural resource instructor at Central Lakes College in Brainerd. We're learning how to cruise timber. You know, we're outdoors when it's 10, 15, 20 below, you know, and, and the kids go, really cold today but I, I go you know what the loggers are outside working today and so your job is to be out outdoors this is kind of an outdoors field. Carla Carlson is a second year student in the natural resources program. She's originally from the Twin Cities. And then I came here and all of a sudden I can talk to people who are from here about the natural resources and what I've learned and they can apply it and it's, it's really a lot fun and I feel like I've learned a lot. The community and technical colleges in Minnesota offer a variety of diverse programs for all learners.